Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, binaries and non, it is your boy, Kevin of Swerving Media. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Hope you have a good weekend. Happy 4th of July. America. In today's video, we're going to be looking over, you know, some of these things that actually might be going against the theme of the weekend. Because, you know, the 4th of July represents freedom. But with some of these technologies that have been coming out as of late, it seems as if some of our freedoms could possibly be at risk. I have this very interesting interview I want to show you. So let's get right into it. So please like and subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell. This is perhaps one of the scariest aspects of it. What we're talking about here is facial recognition by closed circuit television. When it starts with facial recognition, but we've now got to the stage where in China in particular, they can recognize you from the back by your gait, by all kinds of things. And what has happened is, and you can see the positive benefit, police want to arrest criminals or thugs or rowdies even in a football crowd. And so using facial recognition technology, they can pick a person out and arrest him or her. Well, okay, but what it can be used for good purposes in that sense in keeping law and order can also become, particularly in an autocratic state, become an instrument of control. And here's the huge dilemma which people try to solve. How much of your privacy are you prepared to sacrifice for security? There's so as new technologies emerge and these new tools that we use every day come out, they're always sold to us as some kind of convenient tool, some kind of tool that we'll use that will make our lives easier and much better. But often there's a much darker side to these things, like this whole AI surveillance thing and this whole social credit score and the situation what's going on in China is very frightening. Like what he said, like you can get your face scanned and it's just gonna know where you're at at all times. Like the, the fingerprint doesn't matter anymore. I've, I've been fingerprinted and then my, I'm in like the FBI database because I had to do that shit once. But now anywhere we go, at any store we're at, or wherever we're driving at, and we go past a camera on a traffic light, it's just gonna scan our face and we'll be able to be just tracked like that. I mean, we already are tracked with our phone, but now this is just gonna be video, gonna be able to track us and keep data on us at all times and it is very frightening i guess the whole aspect of uh say there's a guy who's a wanted criminal and he uh he, he's out in public and a camera scans his face and then cops are there five minutes later and it's a serial killer i guess that's cool but besides that i just don't really like the direction we are heading there's a tension between those two things now in China, you mentioned, and you're probably thinking about Xinjiang, where you've got a minority, a Muslim minority of Uyghur people. The surveillance level on them is, is unbelievable. Every few hundred meters down the street, they have to stop. They have to hand in their smartphones. The smartphones are loaded with all kinds of stuff by the government. Their houses have QR codes outside them as to how many people live there and all this kind of thing. And I don't know how many, it's way over a million, I believe, are being held as a result of what is being picked up by artificial intelligence systems in re-education centers. And the suspicion is that the, the culture is being destroyed and eradicated. That's the one hand, that's in one particular province. But elsewhere in China, we have now the social credit system that apparently will be rolled out in the entire country. We're given, say, you and I were given to start with, let's say, 300 social credit points. And we're being trailed. If we um, fail to put our rubbish uh, trash can out at night, there'll be marks against us. If we go to somewhere dubious or mix with someone who's political loyalties will suspect we'd get more negative points. On the other hand, if we pay our debts on time and go green, so to speak, and all this kind of thing, we will amass more credit points. And it's those systems right there that scare me the most, because imagine if you 
we, you know, in America, we were part of the social credit score system. And all of a sudden, just because of something you posted on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and it was something that was against the state and that was not deemed good in the government's eyes and you got docked points for that. Or like his example of the trash can, you don't take that out, you get docked for that. Or you get docked for people you're hanging out with. All of a sudden, we're gonna be living in a world where, number one, we are totally just self-centering ourselves. We are totally gonna behave differently because we're gonna know that, you know, the, the all-seeing eye is above Big Brother is watching us. And, you know, there can be an argument to say like, oh, that would make a world better place. But would it really though? Would you really feel that you had freedom just to roam around and just to live the human experience? Or are we setting up some kind of digital prison? And then if we are going negative, the penalties kick in. We'll discover we can't get into our favorite restaurant. We'll discover we don't get that promotion or don't even get that job we apply for or that we can't travel or that we can't even have a credit card. And this is being ruled out and the list of penalties and, and things that have actually been recorded is just very serious. Now, what amazed me when I first came across this was the fact that many people welcomed us. Yeah. And that's the scary part of this. You know that they'll all of a sudden just become a hierarchy of people who get so involved in the points they have. That becomes their life, making sure their credit score is just the highest and you know this whole snitch culture gets created. Then all these black sheeps will start happening. These people will be like, no, I can't hang around that guy. He's got a bad credit score. In a way, there's kind of like some similarities with social media, but it's like much worse. Because in, in real life, there's not too many downsides to really not having a big profile on social media or anything. I mean, I guess you could say you can get more in life by having like a verified Instagram and millions of followers, but whatever. Say you don't have that, it doesn't really affect you. But with this whole system brought in, everyone's involved with it and you have to participate. And that scares me. It's wonderful that both, I've got a thousand points. How many have you got? And they don't realize that the whole of life is becoming controlled in the interest ostensibly of having a healthy society. So it is, talk about 1984. Now, this is not futuristic speculation. This is already happening. George Orwell, you mentioned him, who wrote 1984. He talked about Big Brother watching you and that technology would eventually, it is doing it. This is narrow AI. This is not futuristic in any way. It's what's actually happening at the moment. If you haven't read this book, I advise that you read it. After I read this book, I honestly was like, wow, I wonder what George Orwell would say about today's world. Because sometimes I think after reading that book, uh, the current situation with the whole surveillance and everything might even be much worse than what he imagined and wrote in this book here. But there's some crazy similarities and correlations that are just totally came true. And the fact that he wrote this book in 1948, I believe, is fucking wild. But I think it would be very interesting if somehow, or maybe we can get an AI to come back and uh, make it a George Orwell AI and ask it, what do you think about today's uh, surveillance capabilities? Do they uh, match up to what you wrote back in your book? Well, and you mentioned briefly the fact that all this stuff exists in the West, except, and the point has been made forcibly, it's not quite yet under one central authority and control, but it is coming. We have credit searches, we have all kinds of stuff that is beginning to creep in in the US and in the UK and I presume also in Australia. And also we have even police forces here, I believe, who want the whole caboodle in here, who want to be able to exert a much more serious level of control. And it is frightening because what it does for human rights is, is well. So, so it occurs to me that, you know, I love history, as I've mentioned. Authoritarian regimes have collapsed under their own weight. Typically, the people have risen up one way or another and there's been an overturning. We've never had autocratic regimes that have had this surveillance capacity. There's you know, an estimated 400 million closed-circuit television sets in China. That, that's one for about every three people. 
I mean, it's mind-boggling. Oh, it is mind-boggling. Um, and even here in the UK, what I'm told is that you're on a closed-circuit TV camera every five minutes when you're moving around. So it is very serious. And, of course, the irony is, as I hinted at earlier, here we are with our smartphones that have got all these capacities, certainly at the audio level, and we're voluntarily wearing them. So we're voluntarily ceding part of our autonomy and our rights, really, to, to these machines when we don't really know what is being done with all the information. So we have a huge problem. And someone has said we're sleepwalking into all of this so that we're captured by it, we're imprisoned by it, and we wake up too late because the central authority has got so much control that we cannot escape anymore. That last part there's wild to think about. Like imagine if the Nazis had the capabilities technology-wise of today. All the misinformation they could put out, all the crazy propaganda, all the surveillance, everything. And it's just wild that this shit is just shoved in our face and told that, oh, it's just for your convenience. Take a smartphone, get a smart TV, wear a smart watch, get some smart glasses, get everything, a smart fridge. And all these things can just totally just be collecting so much data off of us. And then all of a sudden, one day, they just don't work anymore because we hung out with the wrong person or we tweeted something wrong about the government on in, on Twitter. It's just a really frightening world that I totally believe we are marching towards. And I think it's time that we maybe take a step back and kind of maybe, you know, you know, have some binoculars on. We look back a little bit and be like, holy shit, like, what are we doing right now? But that will be it for today's video. Please let me know in the comments what you think about it. Are you worried about a social credit score system? Would you like one? Do you think it would be a good thing for society? Or do you ultimately think it would be horrible for society in that let an authoritarian regime just reign on us in a one world order and all of a sudden the globalists are not the gay frogs? <laughs> so please like and subscribe. Once again, it is Kevin of Swerpin Media. Hope you're having a great day.